falling in love with analog again. Sumiko Bluepoint 3 Low Review. By the way, 500 bucks retail price is where things start to get really serious. Sounds become more rich, the imaging more focused and the overall record more clear. But unfortunately, this price range category is a risiko, right? Because 500 bucks are a lot of money. And in a market full of cartridges, you can go wrong with your choice. And that's why I'm not only going to review the Sumiko Blue Point 3 Low, but I'm going to compare it also with three different big brands like Orcrofon and Cold Note. A lot to say in this review, so let's move on. For its 40th anniversary, Sumiko introduced a new cartridge lineup where inside we can find the new Blue Point 3, available in two models, low and high output, making actually the high model with an output of 2.5 mV, also if it is a MC cartridge compatible with the moving magnet input phone. Comparing to the previous models, the Blue Point 2, the new model is coming with an improved resonance control and a more modern body. I know probably you are asking yourself what about MC versus MM, which one you prefer? Well, thing, I think it's something subjective, really subjective. My overall feeling are that the MC cartridges are more refined, more holographic and are coming with a really fast attack. Where moving magnets are probably richer on the bottom mid-range but with a more softness on the top end. It's certainly a generalized explanation but that's what I noticed it during my test. The Blue Point 3 Low is coming in a beautiful wooden box packaging and I set up it on two different turntables, the Gold Note Valore 425 Plus and my reference RPM9 Carbon from Project. We review both of them so I will let it in the description. I really really love the stylus protections card, something out. How it's called, something like that. Easy to place and remove and not like the Orthofon 2M, right? If you have it, you know it. And also is going to protect the entire stylus and not just a part of it like the Ana cartridges. They have this sort of air input in the middle. I don't know for what, for the humidity or something like that. If you know it, let it in the comment because it's something really interesting. Blue point can be safely and easily mounted on your head shells or tone arm thanks to the threads inserts. And after the adjustment, I use the torque screwdriver. The body doesn't look really, really solid, so I will be careful to not tie it too much. After cable connections, I proceed with the alignment of green A as usual, great with many records and one of my favorite, and I set the tracking force at 2 grams as specs. For this test I used many preamps, but last test I performed it with the Parasound JC3+, Plus, one of my favorite. And I set the internal impedance at 200 ohm. Great, everything ready to check with analog magic distortion analyzers. The first measures regarding the low adding. And here basically you can check the cartridge frequency response. And we can observe that between 10 and 20 kHz was slightly bright. So I went down to 100 ohm, much much better. Also we got a flatness improvement from 4 to 2 decibel. And next I measure also speed and wow and flutter on the RPM9. I know already about it on the RPM9 is excellent. You will get 33.333 RPM and 0.1% on wow and flutter. But I like to check it every time to be sure that the belt is always ok. Great, so I move to crosstalk. And here I measure minus 20 dB left to right channels and minus 26 dB right to left. Specs are saying 30 decibels of crosstalk. So left to right is slightly low. Definitely you can improve it with more tuning, more hours of setup, but I want to move forward on it. And I have to tell you also, for example, in the HANA ML that also specs are giving. 30 decibel, I got, yeah, minus 26, minus 28, so was more close, I was expecting something more on the Sumiko, but I decided to move forward. Moving on Zenith angle, track 2 was good, around 3% of intermodulation distortions on both channels, that becomes slightly higher, closer to inner screws, around 10%. 
where usually I got something around 4-5% with most of cartridges. So not outstanding but let's say fine. And in the end I checked also the resonance, so combination performance of the tone arm and the cartridge. We spoke about it in the Analog Magic review, here we want something between 7 Hz and 12 Hz, right? Below 7 Hz you will cut emphatizations, if you have resonance you will cut these emphatizations of vibrations noise coming from bearings or motor for example and above 12 Hz you are going to touch the musical information, audible musical information, so we don't want this, we want to stay inside 7 to 12. There is a formula that is not perfect unfortunately, what you will get is just a number but doesn't work like that. But let's take a look of the Sumiko Blue Point 3 resonance to understand better. So the test is performed 7 Hz, 7.5 to 35 Hz, and as you can see the Blue Point 3 resonance is taking place from 9 to 10 Hz till 13 Hz, with a peak at 12.9 Hz, so slightly high, right? The Sumiko is a very light cartridge, only 6 gram, so I had to add some weight and more heavier screws that help to limit the resonance around 11 Hz. Great, it's working, you see? So let's move to some quality. So a record that I really enjoy with the Sumiko Blue Point Low 3 was Pulchum from Jacques West Lucier. I don't know if you know the story behind the lawsuit between Lucier and Eminem on this record that was claiming that the beat for the track Kill You, the Martian Murders LP produced by Dr. Dre, was stolen from his compositions Perch. Actually, let's listen to seconds of both of them, not more, otherwise I will have copyright problem. What do you think? Pretty clear, right? Let me know in the comments. I love these records. Really clean, a beautiful presentations and a really pleasant experience. And I paid something like 10, 20 bucks. It's also really easy to find here in Germany for a good price. And here the Sumiko Blue Point Low 3 was able to deliver such a firm and solid tram with an extremely fast attack and decay. And if you hear these records, you will notice it that it's like when you have a camera and you zoom on something. The sound stage is moving, is becoming wider sometimes with the piano and the drums that are taking the overall space between left and right channel, making them appear really wider than they are. A truly remarkable record that was performed from the Sumiko Blue Point 3 low in a beautiful way. Nothing was missing, nothing was too much emphasized. Moving on something more classic and bigger in terms of instruments number, I played this copy of Beethoven Symphony 6. Wien Philharmonic and as Christmas I was in Wien and it's simply one of the most beautiful city here in Europe, I love it. We visit a lot of museums, I saw many classic concerts, one of them, I have the CD actually, don't get stressed, get Strauss. I was there with my family, we had a lot of fun and in Christmas is so beautiful, we eat the best. Wiener Schnitzel, ask Arnold Schwarzenegger if you don't know what he is, maybe he can help you. By the way, we are not here to speak about food, so let's move on with the sound quality. This record is a selection of Deutsch Grammophon reissue remastered from the original analog tape, in collaboration with Project. And here was clear for me for the first time probably something in common in every record that I spin with the Sumiko Blue Point 3 Low, and is about soundstage deepness. 
is a cartridge that is never aggressive, but even laid back. Don't expect instrument or artist holographic projection, rather an incredibly beautiful deepness and sense of scale coherence. And on these records, it cut its ability to remain firm and compose also in complex passages and clean and delicate in pianissimo passages. When it's come to reproduce big orchestra, didn't disappoint it at all when it's come to deliver physicality. I like orchestra when it sounds big and when it's not congested. And that's what I got. Moving on something more electronic. And I have this beautiful record from Monolink. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it actually. It's crazy, right? That's really beautiful. And if you don't know, Monolink is a German music producer specialized in EDM. And that's his second album that was out in 2021 to LP 13 tracks. It's a record that combines mellow beats to a to his beautiful holographic airy voice that was perfectly reproduced from the Sumiko in terms of timber accuracy. When it's come to deliver low bass is absolutely not a problem for the Sumiko that present a lot of slam. Good articulations, nothing is emphasized or too warm, rather clean and solid. This was about male voices, where I test so many artists moving also on female voices. I played this beautiful record, the wonderful sound of female voices. Okay, analog productions, and I have to say something about analog productions. When I spin any analog productions records, I don't have nothing to do with them, but it's simply another planet. Ultra clean, huge soundstage. It's every time that I do like, wow. Also here we have two beautiful LP with a selection of beautiful voices mastered by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio. And I have this one, but I have also wonderful sounds of male voices. I have both of them. Female voices on this LP with the Sumiko were such sweet, full of nuance, not forwarded or laid back, just perfect. But let's move finally to something really interesting that is the comparison with other cartridges to give you more information regarding the Sumiko Blue Point Low 3. Comparing the Blue Point Low 3 with the Gold Note Vasari Shibata, two cartridges from Gold Note, a cartridge that is coming with a minor issue, it's not really easy to set up and align. I don't like the the not removable stylus guard protectors make it hard to align since it's really difficult to see the cantilever from the front position. It's a cartridge that is coming in a better body. I forget this to say that it has a very close retail price to the Sumiko. When I say body, I say in terms of material, right? And presents a great tracking ability, probably thanks to a Shibata cut, but could give you more problems also in terms of noise floor. If not, well aligned or with a proper VTA is something that I noticed. So yes, definitely is more difficult. I found it more difficult, at least for me to set up. Speaking about sound quality, the Vasari is warmer, is more detailed, more holographic and extended in the bottom end. For example, when I spin this beautiful record, love it. In one song, all melody, I got a boomy bass. Something that I didn't have with the Sumiko because it's more, let's say, neutral on the bottom end. Imaging and details are superior in the Vasari Shibata, but it's like the attack and speed of the Sumiko Blue Point Reload. Something that I noticed in these beautiful records and drums. This is a 45 RPM uh, Abbey Road, if I'm not wrong, 2LP, but I got also this one mastered from the original analog and digital masters by Bernie Grandman and Bob Ludwig. And I prefer this last one, it sounds more natural to my ears. Let me know what you think about it in the descriptions if you have both of them and which one is your favorite. And I also compare it with this beautiful record that I just purchased, Craft Recordings, working with the Miles Davis Quintet, all analog mastering from the original tapes by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio, pressed on 180 gram at RTI. You can go wrong with Kevin Gray. Funny because I had a live interview with Kevin Gray, so it was a short interview I felt really so stupid, I said, God, I could ask him more questions or better questions, so... Maybe we, we will do another one. 
And here I have to say that comparing the Vasari with the Blue Point 3, the Vasari it has these holographic three-dimensional presentations that was pushing piano not in your face but too much forwarded, still conserving a clean separation because it's coming with a great imaging. But I prefer the deeper soundstage presentations of the Sumiko, still having an airy trumpet more forwarded with the piano more in the deepness of the soundstage, giving a beautiful contrast between the two. And compare it in the end with the quintet bronze probably make more sense compared it with the quintet blue, but unfortunately I got only the bronze at home. And the quintet bronze on the RPM9 is also a beautiful combo. You will not need to add weights for improve the resonance and the RPM9 reach the VTA without any problem. The quintet bronze is a tall cartridge, right? And I had problems in some turntables that I couldn't install it because you couldn't reach a correct VTA. And the sound quality I will describe it as romantic, sweet and smooth. It's one of my favorite cartridges in the retail price. I love it, especially with jazz music, it's wow. But yes, it's less versatile compared to the Sumiko Blue Point 3 Low and more expensive. In the end, the Sumiko Blue Point 3 Low is an absolutely real, versatile cartridge. It's working with any musical genre. So for those like me, don't like to switch cartridges every time and still want to listen for any musical genre, it's just perfect. It's easy to install and is able to do everything in a great way. You can be absolutely disappointed with it. From an audio is everything. I hope you enjoyed the review, guys. Stay tuned because more catches review are coming. <music>